what's going on everyone uh we are back live uh with a brand new episode of snaps your favorite daily college football podcast i'm one of your hosts t bob Aber. i'm joined as always by aaron murray aaron what's up man you look great got the headphones on today thank you You've apparently been internet bullied out of one AirPod into some real cans over there. How are we feeling today, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little soft. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be honest right now. It, it, it kind of got to me a little bit, this whole one AirPod thing. And mm-hmm. I kind of felt cool. I liked it. I could hear you. I could hear myself. And it was just a nice little rhythm. But then you go to the comments, people call me a jackass, kind of got to my heart a little bit. So we're with the... Um, with the big Wait, that's a lie today. though, right? Like you really, you really, there weren't really calm, right? You just, you just like yes, left your were. AirPods somewhere and this all you have, right? What do you, you, didn't, you didn't really catch negative comments about the AirPod, did you? I did catch negative comments about the AirPod. Yeah, the one uh, AirPod was just people weren't feeling it. I don't like the two because I couldn't hear myself. How about this, Aaron? How about this? Into my, my audio box so I can actually hear everything, which is nice. Okay. Well, I mean, look, man, if you're doing this, I just want to make sure you're not doing this for place of insecurity because you know what? It is. It is for a place of insecurity. Well, it doesn't need to be because you look great with one AirPod and you've got excellent hair and it doesn't need to be held under those cans. Anyway, Okay. We're getting distracted here, uh, which is kind of part of the course. A lot of times with this show, uh, if you're listening for the first time, welcome in, hit the like button on YouTube. Uh, we got some big news coming on YouTube soon here, hopefully. Um, also you can always rate and review the show wherever you listen to pods. That really helps. Uh, we've been gone for a little bit y'all. Um, we didn't do yesterday's show. We did an awful job of communicating that got canceled last minute. So that's on us. And uh, we didn't do last Thursday live, so we're coming up on nearly an entire week without doing a live show. So we are so happy to finally be back. And shout out everyone in the chat. Daniel Howard, Nate Dog, Vietnam, Heavily Sins, Andy J, Vietnam Tapes, LOL, where's Draymond? Uh, Draymond's actually coming on in about 30 minutes, and he's going to be breaking down the Mel Tucker era at, at Michigan State. It's, it's, oh, it's is he? That's insane, awesome. dude. Yeah. He literally, like, despite the fact they just lost the Lakers last night, they're down 3-1, he agreed to come on and talk about Peyton Thorne transferring to Auburn. Let's go, dude. Mm. Um, mm. Team all player. right, so we got a couple things to get to today. Uh, we're going to get to Texas, as they're in the news. Thanks, Urban Meyer. We're going to talk a lot of gambling today. And then, as I just alluded to, maybe touch on Auburn a little bit. Uh, In case you missed it, Urban Meyer is out here uh, praising the University of Texas as uh, he has some very interesting quotes, uh, basically talking about how good Texas roster is this year. And Cliff Fax saying, quote, I think Texas, you didn't mention them. uh, Oh, and sorry, this comes from Urban's Take with Tim May, which is the name of his podcast, Uh, Urban's Take. So here is Urban's Take. Quote, I think Texas, you didn't mention them, but don't sleep on Texas this year. I was talking to Ohio State Associate Athletic Director Mark Pantone, and I was talking to the recruiting court director at Ohio State, man for man, roster against roster. It's hard to say Texas does not have the best roster in college football. Not a good roster, not a great roster, Aaron. This man Murray yep. Myers out here saying he thinks Texas may have the best roster and using his inside info at Ohio mm-hmm. State to try to get there uh, off the bat before you get into how I feel about, like, what's your reaction? Is Urban Meyer chasing headlines here, or do you think he's being legitimate there? I think he's being legitimate, actually. I mean, they do. They have a really good roster. We know they have a good roster. That's 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 not a question. They've been uh, top 10, you know, top five recruiting class for the past five years. One year they were, like, 15, depending on what, what service you look at when it comes to recruiting-wise. It's like there is talent. There's four and five star guys littered up and down that roster. The difference between Texas and, and all these other schools, and I think the Athletic did an article on this, you know, in the past week or so, is the development of that talent. That is where yeah. Texas has struggled. When Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State get four and five star athletes, they turn them into all Americans. They put them into the NFL, and they're getting drafted first, second, third round. A four or five star guy goes to Texas. He kind of disappears a little bit like that. That's the problem. You, you've you been gifted the state of Texas. You've been gifted a, 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 a bunch of kids that grew up loving this symbol and loving the, the burnt orange. And they come to your campus, yet they don't get any better. You kind of get who you get and then you're just that. And then you don't really develop into a potential NFL guy. So this is going back to Sark again. Like this is Sark's big year because this is year three. 
So now you've had two years, a little bit more than two, heading into year three now, two plus years to develop this talent as these freshmen and sophomores now get ready to those that, that age where they are more mentally and physically mature, the time when they're getting ready for the NFL. I want to see a Sark better developing tech talent compared to the past decade where Texas really has not done a great job of turning these guys into NFL talent. So I'm with Urban, though. Like, you look at the roster and you look at the recruiting stars and you see what they've done in the transfer portal. Yes, it is the most talented roster in the Big 12. And if you can win that conference, you're going to be in the playoffs, which means you're one of the better teams in America. So uh, a few things here. Uh, got a lot of things, I guess. First off, on star rating. I know a lot of us and a lot of football players especially like to roll their eyes at star rating. They like to do it, you just you know, star rating. Mm -hmm. The thing is, star rating works on the macro yes. scale. Individual mm -hmm. recruits go boom or bust, right? Yep. But on the whole, when spread out, it is an indicator of who should be good. Like, who are the yes. top three rosters from a star rating perspective every year? Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State. Okay, yep. who are the best teams ever? Like, so so let's all be very upfront about that. And yes, there is something in the water at Texas that even does transcend Steve Sarkeesian. And maybe the most shocking statistic that I've heard in the past, I don't know, a few months. Um, did you know, Aaron? I, I think we said this in the show. Bijan Robinson was Texas' first offensive player drafted in the first round since Vince Young. Since Vince Young, Aaron. I've lived an entire life since Vince Young. Holy I was in smokes. high school. Since Young. Yeah, first yeah. off, despite the fact they've gotten a ton of five stars, ton of four stars, all on that side mm -hmm. of the ball. They're first, so there is absolutely something wrong in the water, in the ecosystem of Texas as to yeah. why these players don't develop once they get there. Um, I, I think it's maybe because they're all just a bit too up their own ass. But look, I, I don't know exactly what the case would be. And here's my point with Steve Sarkeesian, right? And, and maybe I get misconstrued here because I'm always yelling about how he's overrated and all these other sort of things. It's I've arrived here. It's maybe not even that Steve Sarkeesian is that bad of a coach, right? Because we've seen what he can do in coordinator roles, both the NFL yes. and college level. And he's had some success. Now, he's never won 10 games as a head coach, but whatever. But here is what Steve Sarkeesian is not. He is not the guy to break that Texas curse. He's just not. And, and if you want to prove me wrong, okay, we'll go and do it this year. But, Aaron, I'll be damned if I sit here and listen to excuses from you again this year for Steve Sarkeesian if they lose three or four games, okay? Because the bottom line is that this Urban Meyer quote is just more evidence to the freaking mountain of evidence that mm -hmm. we have uh, that Steve Sarkeesian – must win and must win big. I mean, Aaron, yeah. I'm going through the schedule. They need to win 11 games. If they don't win 11 games, the season's a failure. Okay, I think and 10. you can say that's unfair, but whatever. That is yeah. that that is the uh, when you have this roster, that should be. And you play in this conference. I mean, look at this at Rice win. Okay, I'll give you a Bama a home. I will say at Bama uh, loss, whatever home against yes. Bama yeah. or no, they're at Bama loss. Uh, Wyoming win at Baylor should be a win. Kansas win, mm -hmm. put Oklahoma in the maybe. At Houston, win. BYU, win. Kansas State, maybe. TCU, maybe. At Iowa State, win. Texas Tech, win. So right there, you just have to 2-1 that grouping of TCU, Oklahoma, and Kansas State. So the 10-win season. That's not 11. I think 10, I think 10's a, I think 10 is, if you win 10, 10 heading into the SEC. Letting him off the hook. That's, no, that's pathetic. No, it's not. No, yes, it's it not. is. No, it's He's not. better no, than not. every one of those rosters that I just named. I agree he's better than them, but, I mean, we're talking about, you know, once again, 18 to 20, like they're going to have a bad day. You're going to have a bad day against a good team, maybe not the same quality team, but this isn't Alabama. This isn't Georgia. Like, it's not only about building a roster that is competitive with players, but it's also building a mentality, that bully-like mentality that we are and we know we are the best. Not because we have enough stars, because we truly believe when we walk on the field that our shit don't stink. Alabama mm -hmm. had that feeling forever. They walked into the field and the other team looked across and said, damn, like I did. I mean, I remember we faced them in the SC championship game. I looked around, I was like, man, there's Nick Saban. There's so-and-so there's so-and-so they've won X amount of championships. There was a somewhat of an intimidation factor that you kind of had to mentally get over as an opponent. Georgia's there now too, along with Ohio state. And you can kind of lump Michigan in there. They walk onto the field. They are mentally at a huge advantage over their opponent. I don't think Texas is there. I think Texas is, yes, star-wise and star power better than their opponent, but I don't think anyone's 
necessarily scared of Texas. I don't think anyone's circling Texas on their calendar. I don't think anyone walks into the stadium and says, oh my God, we're playing Texas today. So they have to get to that point. And that starts with getting to a 10 win season. But, that starts okay, with but, getting but, to a conference championship. You it, build the brand to be a little bit scary. And then you go from there right now. They're not, they're not, they're not winning the mental side of the game. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree, but why does Texas and Steve Sarkeesian get treated with kick gloves? Kirby Smart didn't do that. Like, sure, Kirby Smart takes over a pretty good Georgia team, 10-3 and Georgia team that had gone 9-3, won, won a bowl game, and went 8-5 and five in year one. But what do you do immediately after that? 13-2, and two, playing yeah. for a national championship, right? Then 11-3, and 12-2, 8-2, 14-1, 15-0. and, two, 14 and, one, 15 and 0. Okay, like I, I, I don't get why Sark gets to take over a seven and three team, go five and seven, eight and four, and now you're saying ten and three. Eleven wins should be the metric what are you for success. At ten and three. It's ten and two. First off, there's not thirteen uh, wins in the season. Only twelve. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm including. Uh, I guess I'm including a bowl game in there. There. Uh, right. From, from, the, from the person who always bitches that you can't include a bowl game in a win. I just want to know regular season. Ten and two. We're talking about regular season. Ten and two. Is a really good season, ten and two, and you're considering okay. My Alabama, bad, my bad. No, no, no. This is this is on me. I thought we, I thought they the played championship. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought they played thirteen games. Uh, ten and two. Then that's fair. Ten yeah. and two. Then we're on the same page. Actually, I apologize. Yes. Ten and yes. two. It has to be that. If anything less than that, and it is I a do. failure. Even though Aaron, um, we all know that Urban Meyer is a schemer, right? He's he's known to be one of the best college football schemers of our generation, and hmm. Think about this. Is this all just a 4D play for Urban Meyer to try to get the Texas job? Ooh. Keep your third eye open, right? Because what does this quote do? It immediately, like, look at my almost Pavlodian reaction to it. I saw the quote. What did I do? I immediately got angry at Steve Sarkeesian. And I immediately started yelling about how this has to be the make or break year. And there are no more excuses. And it's year three when you're supposed to have everything you want, like how you want it. And you have the returning quarterback. And I just immediately start firing myself about Huff. If, if Steve Sarkeesian fails, he has to be fired. That's why Urban did it, dude. Urban knew what he was going to do. Urban's yeah. trying to get out the media game. He's trying to get back into coaching. And well, he Urban wants that first orange on his he chest. Literally came out, he literally came out last week and said he's, he's, he's done with coaching. But yeah, okay. I do okay, agree when Texas see. comes calling and the big fat paycheck comes rolling in, you, you may try to change it to a little bit. Plus, it's a way to get back in the SEC for him. Um, I, don't think, I don't think either coach, the more I think about it, you know, I don't think either coach is necessarily on the hot seat unless they just completely, completely crap the bed. And I'm talking about um, Sark and Venables. You know, both teams obviously heading into the SEC. You want to gain some, 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 some momentum. Yes, both teams are clearly, clearly talent-wise better than everyone else in the Big 12. Have more resources than anyone else in the Big 12. Have more, and I, every category, they're not just a little bit ahead. They are significantly ahead of everyone else from Baylor, et cetera, et cetera. So there should be no excuse of why these both teams shouldn't be 10-2, and 11-1, fighting yep. for the conference championship in the season. But even if they're not, say, say Oklahoma is – Seven, five, eight, and four. Say Texas is eight and four, nine and three, somewhere in that somewhere in that area. I don't think either one would lose their job. I think for Texas, for Sark to lose his job, he would have to be more in that seven and five range, maybe eight and four for for this whole scenario that you're talking about for Urban to maybe backdoor his way in there as Texas jumps to the SEC next year. I would think Oklahoma would have to be seven five and seven, six and six, maybe where they consider, hey, is Venables really the guy? that we want leading the ship as we move into the SEC. I don't anticipate that happening at all. I think both these teams are going to be the two premier teams in the Big 12 next season. Maybe I'm sipping the Texas Kool-Aid once again. I'll probably be – you'll be bitching at me for, for being an idiot in, in six months. Hmm. But, like, right now it's hard not to look at the roster and say that both these teams should be at a spot. And I don't think either coach will be fired heading into the SEC come 2024. Texas will fail. And I'll have to listen to another offseason of excuses from you about how Steve Sarkeesian actually is a good football head coach. Uh, if he goes three eight years. and four, he, gets three he years should be book. fired, but he's not going uh, to. This is year three. I, this is year three. Oh, I know. I know. But I know the, the, the timeline has been accelerated because of um, the portal and, and, and the ability to rebuild a roster. 
I still like three years. Three years to me is, is the number that you judge a head coach on. You get three years to get it together, to show me you can develop talent, that you can get these guys and, and, and make them all, all conference, all Americans, you know, top NFL draft picks, three years to figure it out. If you can't do it at three years at a place like Texas, then yes, you don't deserve to be there. So let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold judgment on Steve Sarkeesian until what I see after this season. And, um, then, I'll, and then I'll crap on him. And then T-Bob, you and I have a session in, in middle of December, and it will all be about how Steve Sarkeesian should never get a head coaching job ever again. Wow, how bold of you to wait until they fail to make a call. Uh, that's so courageous. Because I, I don't think they're going to – my, my No, I know, I know. I know you legitimately think they're yes. going to be good. I know, I, I know. And a lot good. of you all do. Uh, I'm yeah. trusting in the fact, you know, that they won't because they won't. Yeah. Um, Wilk says Texas going 12-0 and confirmed. Uh, look, you know, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Uh, has Sark ever had a top 10 – Sark ever had a 10-win season? Has coach says Sir Clavington? Nope. He has not. Imagine that. It's a very good point. Clint Moses, Urban to Texas when entering the SEC. Mm. Mm-hmm. Look, I don't know, dude. Um, I mean, and, and, and how about this, dude? I, I, I still find it just infinitely frustrating and representative of the softness over there in Austin that it's a penalty in the Big 12 to do horns down. Like, yeah. how about you stop worrying about penalizing people for doing horns down and you start winning football games so that people can't do horns down to you because you're beating their ass. Uh, my boy, Steve Moulton, who I love says hook him for four losses. I agree. I agree. Um, all right. So that's enough on Texas. Anything you want to add, Aaron? Hook him, and, baby. Uh, my team. That was my team growing up. That was my team growing up. Texas, Texas, Texas. Only team. Always horns you down, think I'd be salty against Texas? The only damn team that didn't offer me a scholarship. But you know what's funny? I mean, what what works against Texas, and it's not even fair to them, is that I don't know that there's a more satisfying celebration in the country than doing horns down. Yes, like it just feels no, no, so no, no, no. good. What about mocking a mocking Gator Chomp? No, no, that's fun too. I used to go chomp, chomp, and then throat slash. Big fan of that. Yes, yes, big fan of that. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a lot, you know. It's a it it kind of takes forever. It's like it's a lot of movement. This is just it's so simple, and you can almost feel it. Like, it's almost like you hear the gong when it happens. It's just oh so sweet. I love it so much. Uh, By the way, Brum, when you break this out, you know you can cut like. A few minutes ago. I've left you a few places. To cut no, that. you gave me a great out. You did a great job. Okay, you gave me perfect, an awesome perfect, out. Perfect. I want to make sure we're on the same page here, boys. Um, all right. That is uh, the Texas conversation. Aaron's an idiot. Uh, call him Charlie Brown. He's going to kick the ball once again. And uh, it's going to get Probably. pulled from him once again. Uh, gambling is in the air in the college scene right now. And uh, it's, it's kind of one of those funny like, oh, my God, who could have predicted this? Are you telling me that gambling companies are spending billions of dollars on customer acquisition and kids are going to gamble? Like, what? Uh, But before we get to the Iowa controversy, I guess we need to touch on Alabama because I don't think we've talked about it here. And it's college baseball. But um, there's an LSU Alabama baseball game where Alabama head coach Brad Bohannon uh, had a late scratch. Mm -hmm. He, He took out his starting pitcher for Friday night and he called one of his boys who's at a sports book up in Cincinnati and his boys immediately put a five figure bet on Alabama game, LSU baseball game, a game that had zero bets. The only bet of the game. The only bet, like some books had zero bets and he comes to the five figure bet. Obviously red flags raised incredible casino technology. They look through the footage and they zoom in on his friend's phone they see the number, they link it to Brad Bohannon, head baseball coach of Alabama, and he is now fired. Um, Where's the burner is... phone, T-Bob? Where's the burner phone? Why are we not using a burner phone if we're going to be making some bets like that? I mean, come so on. Because, okay, so because, okay, so I I think a few things. Because, well, first off, he's an idiot, right? I mean, uh, yeah, clearly exactly. he is, oh. and he's narcissistic. Oh. Like, you have to be some kind of special narcissistic idiot to believe uh, that you're going to be able to call your boy and give him a little mm-hmm. inside info and Vegas is like just a game, you know what, just a game Vegas. Like, yeah. like you have to be some kind of special idiot if you, unless you're like a full-time like con man heist guy, but just as but like think, on the side, you think, you're just going to game Vegas. Boy knew, do you think his boy knew or do you think 
he knew that his boy was going to put up a five figure bet. Like maybe I'm thinking like, okay, let me tell my boy that, um, you know, this is what's going to happen. This is, this is what my anticipation anticipated outcome of the game's going to be because of what I'm doing with my roster thinking that maybe he'll put like a grand, two grand, a few grand on the game. We want to bet, get some money. Nice. Great. Like, maybe he wasn't thinking that this dude's going to try to, you know, pay off his mortgage by placing a yeah. gigantic bet as soon as I sent him a message. No, you're no Aaron. No, you, you are, you're one in my mind. It's you're absolutely correct. Friends fall for being an idiot too, placing such a big bet. Yes. Like I want to be painfully clear about this. Bohannon's an idiot either way, but even I find it to be beyond the pale that he could be so dumb that this would be an actual scheme for him to make money, right? Yeah. I think this was him trying to hook up a friend with some yeah. inside info. And then like you said, his friend goes out, like that man makes $500,000 a year. And, and so I cannot fathom that he wants to skim off the top of like a five figure. It's just not worth it in the end. Though, I mean, look, if you see a picture of Brad Bohannon, the pieces do start to fall into place. <laughs> Brum, can you go ahead? And, I mean, look oh. at those motherfucking teeth. And this is the promotional picture from when he was hired at Alabama. Okay. It like that guy is the type of guy who thinks he's going to game Vegas on the side. Like, mm. like those teeth. I still don't think he's the one who was, I don't think he's the one. That was thinking he was going to game. I think this was sorry, sorry. I mean, I mean, that's a guy a though who's dumb enough to think that I, he yes. can just give his friend gambling information and yeah. it's not going to come back to bite him in the ass. Yeah. Those teeth show a distinct. Like, if you make five hundred thousand dollars, you're not allowed to have teeth that bad. Shave them mm -hmm. off. Get veneers. Yes. Get awkward adult braces. It's still. In fact, if I was an <laughs> Alabama fan, I would be calling Greg Burns' job status into in this question oh. here. Because you can't sit across from that man with that grill and agree to pay him five hundred thousand dollars. Just doesn't make any sense. Uh -uh. And I bet you he was an asshole. Because when he got fired, what did the Alabama baseball do team do? They went and took two or three off of Vanderbilt, maybe the best team in the SEC, right? So oh, now now yeah. they're the best team after LSU loses two out of three to Auburn. No, so I said maybe. I said maybe. Yeah. I said maybe. Look, LSU is also maybe the best team, right? It's it's them, Arkansas, Vandy. Wake Forest is awesome this year. They're Georgia's one in the country right now. Uh, yeah, Georgia is kind of sneaky hot right yeah, now. Yeah, uh, I got the bats rolling. Uh, I mean, to Rick Rowland's point, dude, Auburn has two top five series wins in a row. Like it wasn't just LSU; yeah. they got South Carolina, uh, they got South Carolina. as well. Yeah, uh, we coming for that bulldog ass. I'm pretty sure here in a couple of weeks. I'll have to check the schedule. Uh, uh, we may need a little, learn. little little side betting action over here. Uh, uh, Avo's right. That yes. Brad Bohannon picture, that dude screams pyramid scheme. I agree. It's just <laughs> untrustworthy. So whatever. Bohannon's gambling, incredibly dumb. I'm going to be very interested to see if it goes any deeper. I can't imagine that it did. Now, it's not the only story. Mm. Uh, and what's funny about that, The Athletic has an article on this, that Bohannon's story actually broke um, on the same day that the Lead One Association, which is a group of ADs, hosted a webinar to educate athletic departments about college sports gambling. And at the oh. end of the webinar, um, the four gambling experts that they asked, they, they were said, hey, uh, you know, give us a percentage chance. You think it'll be a major betting scandal in college sports? They, they all to a man said 100%. And then later that day, the Bohannon story breaks. Jeez. And then now this latest story breaks where Iowa, Iowa University, University of Iowa, has come out and said that they suspect 26 athletes across five different sports of gambling um, mm -hmm. on these apps, right? Iowa State comes out. They got 15 students or three different sports. So we're talking 41 student athletes in total, Aaron, who have apparently um, engaged in some sort of athletic gambling, which is a big no-no under NCAA mm -hmm. rules. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised if we see more and more of this. I mean, you put yourself in these kids' shoes. Uh, not saying that it's right. I, I, you shouldn't be gambling. I mean, these kids know the rules. Don't be a damn idiot. But you got a little bit of money in your pocket. You do know that 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 you know maybe some insider information. And gambling's in our faces twenty four seven nowadays. It just I yeah. think there's what thirty six states. It's now legal to sports gamble. Come on, Georgia, let's get going. Let's get going. I'm sick of hitting T Bob up to, to place my bets. So I placed my Carson Beck Heisman bet yet. It's been fucking two oh, weeks. Oh, shit. I haven't um, done it yet. I mean, my God, two weeks ago, I've sent you that bet. Whatever. Regardless, betting is everywhere. I can't turn on the TV 
and not see lines on every single show that I watch. Every single yeah. sports show that you watch on the ticker, they're talking about it. It's lines, it's numbers, it's gambling, it's gambling, it's gambling. It's everywhere. So if I'm watching Sports Center and I see that my team is a favorite here or, or the team that we just faced is a favorite over another team that we've also faced, I'm like, eh, I don't know, man. I think that team's going to smash them because I played them. I kind of know. Plus, I know this and the other. Like, it's, it's, it's hard. I really is. It's hard. You need you need constant education. That's it. Plain and simple. Like these schools have to step it up in a variety of ways. They need more education at NIL. They need more education when it comes to sports gambling. It needs to be like once a semester, once a semester, you bring in an expert in each field and sit down every student athlete at your university and you have to drive it home over and over and over and over again. It can't be a one-time thing because you tell a kid as a freshman, don't gamble, don't blow your money on NIL, and a year later, they're going to blow all their damn money and they're going to play some stupid bet. Or they're going to send something to mom and dad or brother and sister who, who asked them, hey, is so-and-so injured for this game? Uh, and you say, yeah, yeah, he's not playing. And the brother's like, oh, shit, let me go put some money on the game now. Like, it's... You need to, you know, is, you're right, Aaron. not the first, and this will not be the last time that we hear, hear something with, with, with kids making some stupid decision with gambling. So, you know, as wrong as you were on Texas, uh, we are of one mind on all of this, right? Like, uh, first off, of course this happened. Um, these, these gambling companies have been losing hundreds of millions of dollars in customer acquisition, right? Like, they are willing to eat multi-hundred million dollar losses just to get you in their ecosystem. So not only are you seeing everything everywhere that you're talking about, the ads, but these ads, in a day and age where we can manipulate your mind better than we've never been able to before, these ads are all perfectly designed to want to entice you. We do them! We did FanDuel! I mean, it's what made the show go, right? Like, yeah. it's it's been a windfall for us in the media. I mean, LSU was basically planning on putting a Caesars Sportsbook in the stadium. It's been massive for my local radio show. Now it is starting to dry up a bit as, you know, they get some of their customers and they're a bit, they're kind of retracting a little bit. They're saying, okay, we want some of that money to come back flowing to us. But yeah, of course, if you're spending billions on customer acquisition, you're going to get players that want to play. But like yeah. you said, you have to educate them that you can't get away with it, right? Like, yes. like, like really show them that no matter what you do, if you're betting from a friend's phone, this, that, like you can't get away. Probably the only way that I could fathom that you could still get away with this is old school, right? Cash only with a bookie or, or, or a friend who's a bookie or something burner phone. like otherwise you're dead. No, no burner phone. You're still dead. That, I, 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 I absolutely, you think it's see, God damn it. Show me your teeth. <laughs> Your teeth are too fucking nice Why to fall into that Brad phone? Bohannon ass Why trap you right there. With a burner phone. I think you get away with a burner phone. I, here, here's here's what's funny. Calls I, only. I'm not, calls only I, on a burner phone. I'm not smart enough to tell you exactly how you would get caught on a burner phone. I am smart enough to know you will get caught on a burner phone um, uh, eventually. Can I walk him through this? Yes. Okay. First of all, any gambling app you use you have to register with your social security number so oh, any <laughs> so any athlete who gambles with an app First is all, going I'm not to get saying caught the athlete the athlete could call a friend a, a, a bookie on his burner phone not saying that you could just yeah no no okay burner, burner phone, phone bookie like, no no but we're talking yeah, about gambling. Gambling. if you Online. gamble with an actual institute if you interact with any sort of institution by yourself yeah. you yes. will or or, or yes. someone is at the casino interacting with you, as we found out with with uh, real genius Brian Bohannon. You will get caught, and, and yeah, you will get in trouble. Yeah, but that was his phone, though. That was his phone. That was. was but I'm. Cr but he. But like we. Like we were talking about. I think I don't remember if this was offline or during the show. He got caught because they literally zoomed in on him. They zoomed the, in on his friend's cell phone and could see the that. camera technology, I'm so they saying, could see his number. I tell my bookie, you better memorize my damn number. I'll give you bets. Well, hold on. We're having two different conversations. We're having two because you're right. Look, if we're talking about going to bookie, then you yeah, said all bets are off. All bets are off. All I thought you off. were saying burner phone, but still gambling with a legal no, institution. No, no, no. Like, right? like, said, like you need no. to be able to. The money has to go into some sort of bank account that can be traced. You you have to use your social security number. You it, it, there's that you can't get away with that. Like these. Yes. No. No chance. You could do another way where it's like. Hey, your uncle says, Hey man, 
I need some inside information. You know, your, your uncle is going to be on the street soon. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to get this burner phone. I'll kind of give you my thoughts every single week. You kind of do with it as you please. You give uncle Rico a call. He goes out there and makes bets during the season. I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe you feel way too confident though. This is the exact same <laughs> narcissism that Bohannon engaged in that got him into trouble. Like you feel like you just fucking saw through the matrix and you just figured out exactly what it is. Uh... I, I'm not following you down this path. I'm, I'm not willing to say that I know like that it 100% won't work, but I'm going to err on the side of caution. And I'm going to say, uh, this Aaron, have you ever seen Ocean's 11? Uh, yeah, I've seen, oh, I love all the oceans. The I house always them. wins. Oh, I know. Well, yeah. that's what they need to do. They need to, they need to get, you know, big time gambling institutions, institutions or, or casinos and, and, and have, and give them, and say needs to give them some money and have them go speak to these, these, kids and give them some real world examples of like don't don't mess with us like we are going to find out and you're going to get in trouble and it's going to ruin your career and but man it's it's hard you can't you have to admit though t but it is so yeah. tempting for these kids yeah. because it's so easy to do it yes to be able to no, place no, bets I, no so i'm easy. sorry you're right i i didn't put that out there like i wanted to and like i did in my morning show again yeah when I say it's completely understandable, it's because not only is all this money being spent on like what making us want to gamble, but gambling's awesome. It is yeah. super fun. And yeah. if you do it responsibly, it's great. And mm -hmm. like, guess what? Everybody around you is doing it. And it's not like you're doing anything illegal. You're doing something against NCAA violations. So this, this, this does bring up and, and Brum, Aaron, maybe y'all can help me square this circle. Cause I don't, I don't know what to think about this. There's one element of this that I don't understand. And it seems to be at odds with one another. And that is that the timeline laid out in the athletic article on May 2nd, uh, here's the exact quote. University of Iowa leadership was notified of potential criminal conduct related to sports ragering that also suggested possible NCAA violations. Now, if I'm a player, I'm a college player, I'm better in the NFL. That is not criminal right? It's super against NCAA violations. You'll lose your career, but it's that's criminal not if you're not criminal. 21. Um, okay. But if you're 21, Oh, and that's fair. Okay. So maybe that's where the, because, because okay, that is my, so when I hear play. criminal and college gambling, I immediately think underage. Okay. Because the director for the commission of gaming in Iowa, um, or excuse me, in Ohio, Brian, uh, Ohio, or no, in Iowa, uh, Brian, a Rico, I think is how you say it. He said, uh, quote, there wasn't anything giving us pause or leading us to believe that any of these markets were compromised. So they don't believe that any match fixing or suspicious wagering went on, but the, the word criminal did pop up in there. So, so you think that could be as simple as underage? That, that makes sense. That, that you actually did. That's the leader in the clubhouse to me. Well, what, 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 is, what is, what is, what is the age limit? What, sorry for, for being um, 21, not knowing this. Is it 21 for gambling? Yeah. It's like drinking. Okay. okay. I didn't know if it was 18. It's like tobacco somewhere now, I think, too. But you know what sucks? Dude? Some really good athletes got caught up in, like, Iowa has a really good baseball team, 37-13. They beat LSU early this year. And their best hitter, Keaton Anthony, cat batting 385, didn't play last weekend. Mm. And depending on how bad this is, probably won't play again. Because, like, they have to – the NCAA has to be draconian on this, Right because you cannot have anything that threatens the integrity of the game because the second one result is thrown into question, then all of a sudden all results are thrown into question. And the next time you lose a bet, it's not because you made a bad bet. It's because, Oh, they cheated. You know, he was point yeah. shaving that ref was doing this. The ref was doing that. So yeah, they're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to come down hard. Uh, Klesko 12. Have we updated Aaron's foreign language pursuit lately? Aaron, have you gotten to day three of Duolingo Mandarin yet? Have we gotten to day three even? <laughs> uh, listen, I was out of town last week, boys. Okay. No how. Not ni how. Was, no how. <laughs> no how. Ni how. Um, yeah, I got to get going. It's t Maddox starts school in two months. I would love to be able to give him a couple little words of advice in Mandarin before he, he, he goes on his new journey. But yeah, golf. What, I have 144 holes of golf last week. You want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> the greatest week ever like that was that was we put mandarin to the side for 144 weeks of, oh you know, my of god golf. dude just practice my like feet. golf honestly just practice golfing phrases like in mandarin right learn how to say like yeah. good shot like oh mm -hmm. fuck or like hit him straight right <laughs> slice like, that and one then, 
Fuck. Yeah, yeah, like slice out. That's what I'm saying. Like you learn these all of a sudden you would be yeah, you would be a Mandarin yeah. expert. Like you would be conversationally fluent within a matter of weeks. True. True. Um, what I need to do, what I need to do is just get it and and just listen to it. I think it I think it has that capability where I could just put it in my ear as I play. Bro, just, what is this? What is this? Like channels? the 90s, like where they're like, oh, I'm gonna sleep with this headset on, it's gonna be reading yeah. to me, and then I'm just gonna absorb the information through osmosis. That the that dilemma I have every day, T Bob, is do I spend 30, 45 minutes doing my Mandarin lesson, or do I go hit golf balls in the garage? Like that is that is the internal Look, battle I face every day. Hi, bro. I oh, I agree. Like I'm is. not I'm not. Ju- I'm just saying that I was right. You're judging. That's all I'm You're pointing judging. out. I'm not judging. Judging. judging you because judging. I'm obsessed with You're Wow Classic right now again, which is really fucking dumb. It's probably the third time in my life I'm now addicted to World of Warcraft again. Which, by the way, if you want to play with me, I'm on the Man Creek server. Drothor, a Druid, hit me up. Not the Ding Thirty, but the point is, like, I shouldn't be doing this again. I'm wasting time. I'm I'm not sleeping as much anymore. I'm cutting out prep time at night to play these stupid ass video games once again in my life. So I'm not coming from a place of judgment. But as Ricky said in Trailer Park Boys, I told us so. I fucking, I told us so. Okay. Mm-hmm. I told you this was going to happen. And you're all defensive talking about, no, no, no. Every day. I'm, it's only 30 minutes a day. Every day I'm going to be, well, I man, know. There you go. no, no, no. I, next week, next week. Next uh, week. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. dude. <laughs> next week. I tell myself well, that all the hey, time. Today is the last day of Sirius XM afternoon radio. Starting tomorrow, no more afternoon radio for the next two months. So I got another three two hours months. of my day. Oh, two wow. Months, you two must months. be like a kid on Christmas right now. I Are know, you so excited? Yeah, but I'm not uh, like on salary. I get paid per show. So, you know, no, I do know that. I do know that. Yeah. 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 It's a finance. But, still, but you know, I mean, two months of, you know, getting three hours back in my afternoon. So now I'm going to have a little bit more time to, you know, do some Mandarin or go. Keaton says, T Bob, have you started playing Jedi Survivor yet? It's awesome. No, um, I loved Jedi Fallen Order. Very excited to try out Survivor, but I'm so happy with WoW right now that I'm just going to wait for them to patch some of these technical issues, and I'll probably come to it here in a couple of weeks. But I am very pumped to see the continuation of Cal Kestis's story. Um, Snaps Poker Attorney, that I'll deal. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun. Um, Aaron, have you ever broken eighty? Wilk wants to know. I have broken 80 multiple times. Uh, I actually did you break 80 80 last week? I did break 80 last week. I shot a 79 at at Wingfoot, which I was very proud of. Damn, son. Shot even through nine today. Did a quick nine. Walked a quick nine before the show. Got even. It was a good day on the course. Um,. I'm impressed. Wingfoot, that's like that, that's when you were losing your what, your bougie private jet life, PJ life? Yeah, that was the bougie just, jet just life. Flying with a random old man up there who brought you up yeah, there for free. Mm, all buddy. very questionable. Mm. Okay. Okay, mm. sure, dude. Um, look, I don't know what you had to do for those boosters in college. It's all good, man. We were pre NIL, you know. We all did what yeah. we had to do. Got it in order the struggle, to struggle, bro. We were struggling back in the day, T Bob and I. <laughs> How many I mean, Jeffrey uh, Epstein jokes can I get away with in the next five minutes? I'm, I'm not going to make it any, but I, I have um, a lot in the holster. You want to talk about Jeffrey Epstein? No, I don't want to talk about Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, it would probably boost us in the YouTube algorithm if we did, but, you know. That is very, very true. Snaps COD tournament? I haven't played COD in a while. And, and you know, no disrespect. Hell yeah. Um, no build Fortnite if you're into that. That's cool, man. No, no, I just, none of these. Well, I mean, COD, Warzone. A battle royale never got me. I've never gotten hooked on a battle royale. I don't know why it is. Just nothing ever hooked me. Um, you know what's pretty interesting, Aaron? If you look at the history of gambling in college, there's actually kind of a couple little fun little stories. So in 1947 to 1951, there were 33 players across seven schools that got that were uh, found to be involved in point shaving over 86 games, which first off, that probably means a lot of shit was going down, right? Yeah. If it's that much, like there was a lot more that we didn't know about. But um, one of these schools suspended was Kentucky with Adolph Rupp back in 52-53. Two years removed from winning a natty, they straight up suspended an entire year of Kentucky basketball in 52-53. So it reached the highest echelons of the sport back in the day. Also, this made me think, my God, has anybody ever, ever ruined a first name worse than Hitler did with Adolf. 
Like if you were to meet a modern day Adolf today, tell me you would not immediately be judging their parents. Now, Adolf Rupp, obviously he's born pre-World War II, right? Yep. We didn't know what Adolf Hitler were going to. But Aaron, what, what would be going through your head if you met someone called Adolf? Hitler, that's it. Play, play you think their simple. parents yeah. are Nazi? I mean, yeah, right? Yeah. Can yeah. you think of a single other name beyond naming your kid? Like, I don't know, like Satan or Beelzebub. Is there a more offensive first name than Adolf? <sighs> no, but you know, I'm, I'm, you're talking to a cashew over here. So of course it, it, it hits home a little bit harder than most. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bring up any bad, no, you know, no, no, bad no. genetic I know you're memories. Not. Here. I know you're not. I, but yes, I agree. I agree. Yes. A little, <laughs> little extreme here. From this is a funny question. Yes, essentially Adolf Rupp is grandfathered in. Like he he does not his parents do not get judged because well that, that so that's the crazy thing about it, right? Like Adolf was a normal name. There were plenty of people named Adolf pre Adolf Hitler, which is what is fascinating to me. Like what if some guy like I don't know like John Rubin or something just becomes the world's biggest asshole, and then suddenly everybody who's named John, you're kind of looking side who's that? Like Hitler ruined a fucking style of facial hair and a first name. That's crazy to think. <laughs> Unless about. you're Michael Jordan. Uh, what, are you saying that Michael Jordan has a Hitler stash? He definitely did, did for a few years. Oh, did he? No way, dude. No way, dude. So. Hold on. I don't know if I grant Michael. Oh my God, he did. What? Hold on. Please pull this up. I do not believe the great MJ was was. Would he do had this. a little. He had a little uh, chin Soul thing patch? to maybe offset it a bit, but like, <laughs> okay. I mean, he kind of did. Is this a real picture uh, that I'm looking at? Oh, uh, hmm. is it from I the Haynes like, ad? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So he's wearing like a white T-shirt, and he's like on like. Yeah. That's that's yes, that is what we're talking about. Wow. Okay. That's how real Mike is that he straight up rocked a Hitler mustache and nobody <laughs> cared. What a legend. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. Okay. So other gambling scandals I thought were vaguely interesting, probably not worth talking about, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, third overall pick in the NBA draft, Jack Molinas was actually arrested uh, back in the late fifties. Now he was a part of the earlier scandal. I think he got out of it. He later gets arrested. He's third overall pick in the NBA. He gets suspended from the A from gambling his rookie year. And then later, he gets arrested in this point shaving scandal. He goes to jail for five years. He becomes the inspiration for the longest yard in 1974. Mm -hmm. So, how about that, we only get Burt Reynolds. We only get Adam Sandler. And we only get Bill Romanowski playing a prison guard because of uh, Jack Molinas. Uh, another one. In the 78-79 Boston College men's basketball scandal, Henry Hill was a mobster who recruited a bunch of players to throw games. Now they sucked at it. They actually won four of the nine games that they tried to throw. Like the bets only hit four times. But Hill is the basis of Ray Liotta's character in Goodfellas. How about oh, that, Aaron? Uh, nice. And here's the last point that you have to try to pretend to be interested in. And it's 1985 Tulane men's basketball. As uh, uh, they got busted. One. Okay, so they got busted shaving. And it was a local attorney. Who did the attorney tell? He told the district attorney, Harry Connick. Who's Harry Connick's son? Harry Connick Jr., very famous musician. The AD, Hinman Wall, later resigns. Who replaces him? Tulane head football coach, Mac Brown. Bet you know Mac Brown was the head coach of Tulane back in the day. Did not know this. I didn't know that either, but it was kind Very of fun. Interesting. He, in fact, he went one and 10 his first year at Tulane, then four and seven. And then 1987 went six and six, went to the Independence Bowl. It was Tulane's last bowl game until 1998. Would they, I'm going to go back to the second one. Was it the entire yeah. team with the Goodfellas one? Was it the yeah. entire team that was a part of it? Because I feel like if you're going to do some point, it's point shaving scandal, the entire team has to be in on it. Because like you have like uh, half the team like trying to win, the other half the team trying to throw the game, it kind of gets a little bit confusing. Yeah, I th I think he had it's at a bunch of players on the team. Yeah. I don't know the exact number, but to your point, it, maybe it wasn't the entire team because again, they did it for nine games and only four games produced yeah. a winning bet. Um, and, and then the, and look, and then there's all the Tim Donahue stuff in the NBA, which still like doesn't get enough 
I don't know, man. Somehow the Tim Donahue stuff did not have nearly as much of an impact as I thought it would because he got away with it for years and years and years, which makes you think that other people are probably getting away with it in some ways. Um, um, Most also, notably, but... a lot of uh, very famous referees who still work in the league today. <laughs> I mean, like, there's like the weird Scott Foster CP3 stuff. I'm sure you all talk about this on the NBA show, bro. But yeah, I don't. Like the Scott, now I know, I think CB3 finally won a Scott Foster game here recently, but the record is absurd. It's, it's, it's really, really, really odd just how often CP3 loses when he referees. Uh, uh, well, I think that'll do it for today's show. Oh, you know what? We'll save for tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do Auburn but, TV tomorrow. Yes, I was going to say, we, we also do have Auburn quarterback news, Peyton Thorne from Michigan State. Sorry we couldn't have Draymond on. You know, he had to cancel last mm. minute. Uh, yeah, we're hoping to get his thoughts on Peyton Thorne transferring to Auburn tomorrow. Uh, and we'll get Charles Barkley's thoughts as well as he arrives at Barkley's old home. But um, we'll talk Peyton Thorne. And then also, guys, kind of secretly here under our noses, this year in the SEC, the year of the transfer quarterback. I mean, everywhere you look, right? Help me yeah. help me real quick here and to close out the show. Who all has a transfer quarterback? We got Devin Leary, Kentucky. Right? Who Alabama. else? We got Alabama. Yep, Tyler Buckner. Yeah. We have Auburn. Yeah. We have Florida. Yes. We have, yep. Yep. Graham Mertz. That's right. Yep. We have LSU. I mean, yep. Jaden Daniels, cool. still a transfer yep. technically. We have Ole Miss. We have South Carolina. We have Tennessee. We have. That's it. I mean, so that's eight transfers total, a majority, yeah. and five not that all are from brand this new. year. Not all from this year. No, but, but, just five, in general, but five guys that did that not are. start their career. Yeah, it did not start their career at that university. Hell yeah, dude. That's crazy, man. I'm, I'm excited to see how it all – who's going to rise. Jared James I mean, Ole Miss has two transfer quarterbacks. Uh, three transfer quarterbacks. Yeah. Are, every I th quarterback on their roster at Ole Miss is a transfer quarterback. I, th I think he was saying uh, – I think he was saying, like, Ole Miss? Like, is Ole Miss in there? Not, like, why did y'all list Ole Miss? I think uh -huh. he was asking if it was in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm wrong. All right, hey, look – we love you all so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with us every day here on Snaps. Again, we hope to have some big YouTube news coming soon, so be on the lookout for that. Um, uh, please, please, please hit the like button. Subscribe. Hell yeah, Clint Moses. Thank you for the love. Go Beavs, indeed. Uh, by the way, Clint giving us a little gambling tip earlier. Oregon State over under at seven and a half wins. Coming off a 10-win year. Maybe feeling the over? We'll see. Hey, also, shout out Chris Kleeman, Kansas State. 44 milli for Cleman. Nice deal there. Um, so we'll talk more college football tomorrow as we do every day here on Snap. Sub to the pod wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify. Please rate and review it if you like it and share it with your friends. Uh, we love you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Ryan Brumley, Paul Farrington, Pat Gunner, Danny Cardenas, Adam Gracia, and everybody else. Thank you for listening and hanging out. And we'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode of Snaps.